Hello and welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and this is the 40th message in the book of Genesis. And we come today to Genesis 42, verse 14. And Father, we ask that you would add your blessings to the word that we are about to study. In Jesus' name, amen. Picking up right where we left off, Genesis 42, verse 14. But Joseph said to them, to his brothers down in Egypt. Remember his brothers came down to buy grain during the famine and they don't know that it is Joseph that he is dealing with. Joseph said to them, It is as I spoke to you, saying, You are spies. In this manner you shall be tested by the life of Pharaoh. You shall not leave this place unless your younger brother comes here. Send one of you, and let him bring your brother, and you shall be kept in prison, that your words may be tested to see whether there is any truth in you, or else by the life of Pharaoh surely you are spies. Joseph wants to know if his younger brother, Benjamin, is really okay. Because with Joseph gone, Benjamin, the only remaining son of Rachel, would be Jacob's favorite, no doubt about it. And maybe out of jealousy, the brothers got rid of him also, just like they got rid of Joseph. 17. So he put them all together in prison three days. They were in jail for three days, but for some unknown reason, this Egyptian ruler doesn't like them. So as far as they are concerned, it could be three days going on life. Verse 18. Then Joseph said to them, the third day, do this and live, for I fear God. People who really fear God are good and fair people. And even spiritually dull people like these ten brothers know that. So maybe for the first time in their lives, these brothers liked hearing that someone in their presence feared God. 19. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to your prison house but you go and carry grain for the famine of your houses and bring your youngest brother to me so that your words will be verified and you shall not die and they did so then they said to one another we are truly guilty concerning our brother for we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us and we would not hear, therefore this distress has come upon us. Time takes its toll on everything. It causes things to decay, to rot, and to go away. But one thing time does not remove is the stain of sin on a person's soul and the guilt that goes with it. For twenty miserable years, these brothers lived with the guilt of what they did to their brother Joseph. 22 And Reuben answered them, saying, Did I not speak to you, saying, Do not sin against the boy? And you would not listen. Therefore, behold, his blood is now required of us. It has been nearly 20 years. So Reuben figures Joseph is dead by now. And since he and his brothers are responsible, he figures they are sure to die because of it. 23 But they did not know that Joseph understood them, for he spoke to them through an interpreter. They never could have imagined that their forthright discussion here was being understood by that Egyptian ruler. And they never would have dreamed that 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 ruler who heard them was none other than Joseph their brother. 24. And he turned himself away from them and wept. Then he returned to them again and talked with them. And he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. Joseph is moved by what seems to be a humble confession on their part. It doesn't seem to matter what they did to him in the past or what kind of misery they put him through. Joseph is moved by their confession. Verse 25 Then Joseph gave a command to fill their sacks with grain to restore every man's money to his sack and to give them provisions for the journey thus he did for them 
he puts the money, Joseph has the money that they paid for the grain, he has it put back into their sacks with their grain. Now, free food would be a nice surprise, except for the fact that their consciences are weighed down with guilt. And when a person's conscience is full of guilt, they see condemnation and trouble everywhere. And they will see it here, 26. So they loaded their donkeys with the grain and departed from there. And no doubt the sons of Joseph leave with mixed feelings at best. They have grain, but they do not have Simon. And the only way they get Simon back, or Simeon I should say, is to get their father to allow them to bring Benjamin back down Egypt. Good luck with that one. 27. But as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey feed at the encampment, he saw his money, and there it was in the mouth of his sack. And later on the rest of the money that was placed into the other sacks will be found as well. Verse 28. So he said to his brothers, My money has been restored, and there it is in my sack. Then their hearts failed them, and they were afraid, saying to one another, What is this that God has done to us? For their guilty consciences are getting, are setting off alarms in their minds now. They know they deserve God's wrath, and everything that happens seems to be a sign that God is out to get them. A guilty conscience can put a bad spin on even a good thing. 29. Then they went to Jacob their father in the land of Canaan and told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man who is lord of the land spoke roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. But we said to him, We are honest men. We are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, and the youngest is with our father this day in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the lord of the country, said to us, By this I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me, take food for the famine of your household, and be gone, and bring your youngest brother to me. So I shall know that you are not spies, but that you are honest men. I will grant your brother to you, and you may trade in the land. Now notice verse 35. Then it happened, as they emptied their sacks, that surprisingly each man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. They had already been accused of spying, even though there was no evidence against them. So now they are really worried, because there's all this sorts of circumstantial evidence pointing to them being thieves. They have the grain and they have the money. They didn't pay for it. That's what they're afraid of being accused of. 36. And Jacob their father said to them, You have bereaved me. Joseph is no more. Simeon is no more. And you want to take Benjamin. Stop there for a second. Jacob does not buy their story about the disappearance, disappearance of Simeon. He blames them for the disappearance of Joseph and Simeon. Last part of verse 36. All these things are against me. Everything is against me. At least it felt that way to Jacob. All the bad things worked against his peace and his happiness. However, because God is God, they were all actually working together for the good of Jacob in the long run. Verse 37. Then Reuben spoke to his father, saying, Kill my two sons if I do not bring him back to you. Put him, in, put him in my hands, and I will bring him back to you. Well, that Reuben's a real thinker. Dad, let me take Benjamin. If I don't bring him back to you, kill my two sons. Father, if I do not bring back your son, then you can kill two of your grandsons. Oh, well, you know, That'll make everything better, won't it? Let's see, Joseph is dead, Simeon is dead, Benjamin is dead, but I feel better now because I just killed my two grandsons. What a fool! 38. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, 
for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If any calamity should befall him along the way in which you go, then you would bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. Jacob says, If I lose Benjamin, I'll never recover from it. Chapter 43, verse 1. Now the famine was severe in the land. And the land here refers to the Holy Land, where Jacob and his sons are living. It is the second year of a seven-year famine. 2. And it came to pass, when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought from Egypt, that their father said to them, Go back, buy us a little food. Egypt is 250 miles away. You wait till your food is gone, and then you decide that you better go to Egypt. That sounds like a bad dream. Verse 3 But Judah said to him, saying, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. Judah is reminding his father that the ruler warned them and his brothers that if they do not bring Benjamin, then they won't get any more food. Not only that, if they show up, they better they, they may be arrested as spies. Verse 4 If you send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. You know, I'm starting to notice a change in these brothers. They're on the verge of starving to death, and yet they still leave the decision to Benjamin. I mean, to let Benjamin go to Egypt up to their father. They, they leave that decision to their father. How we respond in a situation when our appetites are screaming to be satisfied is an indication of where we are spiritually. Twenty years earlier, they would have grabbed Benjamin and dragged him down there without their father's consent. And so they seem to be changing a little bit anyway. Five. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. The ruler of Egypt made up the rule. Judah says, Father, if you do not let us play by the rules, then it doesn't pay to go down to Egypt. Verse 6. And Israel said, Why did you deal so wrongfully with me as to tell the man whether you still had another brother? The ten brothers have committed many sins, but telling the ruler that they had a little brother back home is not one of them. Jacob is the one who's out of line here. Verse 7. But they said, The man asked us pointedly about ourselves and our family saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? And we told him according to these words, Could we possibly have known that he would say, Bring your brother down? True. Jacob is second-guessing their decision. And he's trying to get them to second-guess their decision also. Boy, if you want to waste time, become frustrated and discouraged, then second-guess your, second your past decisions. Because it just doesn't matter. Just start doing the right thing right now. I can't do anything about the past anyway. Well, we'll pick up our study in verse 8 next time. Until then, 